hello everyone in this video we'll talk about how to make a packet containing an ethernet header and an ip header and then how to send it out onto the network so beginning with the program as you can see we've defined the source ethernet header and the destination ethernet header as in the previous example we've also added a source ip and a destination ip which will be spoofed in this packet then we go ahead and have a look at the create raw socket, bind raw socket, etc. APIs which we've already created and gone through in the sniffer tutorials. The send raw packet this is once again identical to as in the previous example. And then the create ethernet header. This is also the same if you've forgotten. Just have a look at the previous tutorial. Now coming up to what's new in this example is first of all is the computation of the IP checksum we know that the IP header contains a checksum field and this checksum is just over the IP header it's not over the TCP or data or anything else it's just over the IP header so calculation of this checksum is done with once complement arithmetic and this code has been almost ripped from Richard Stevens book I would leave this is an exercise to you as to figure out why the IP checksum is computed like this it's actually very simple go by the definition of IP checksum do the once complement arithmetic do the reverse and you can figure it out right moving on this is the create IP header function now as you can see I have left the customization as an exercise to you what this means is that currently in this example I am filling up each one of the IP header values with static things for example I fill up the total length to be something the ID field to be let's say 111 TTL to be 111 etc I'm not taking these as an input from the user so extending this programming example to take inputs from the user for various fields in the IP header is left as an exercise to you now coming back first of all we define something of struct IP header star IP underscore header now it's we've already seen the structure of the IP header let's quickly have a look at where it is here's where the IP header is defined as you already saw in the presentation you have this little edn and big edn differences here but because these have already been in hash of defines so you do not have to worry about them you can directly use you know the IHL or the version and the compiler will figure out what sort of edn message is by looking at the header file so coming here IHL is nothing but the IP header length version is the version of IP type of service total length identification field fragment offset TTL protocol check is nothing but the checksum SADDR is the source IP address DADDR is the destination IP address and after that if there are any options options would follow to keep this example simple we are not dealing with options because almost 95% of all IP traffic goes without options on the internet anyway you can once again extend adding options like record root etc as an exercise now coming back so what we do is we define a pointer to an IP header structure here then we go ahead and allocate enough memory so as to be able to contain an IP header then from here we start filling up the various fields in the IP header we fill up the version to be 4 IHL the concept of IHL is it contains the number of double words in the IP header double words means 4 bytes so if the IP header is of 20 bytes and the number of double words is 20 divided by 4 which is 5 so that is why whatever the size of the IP header I am dividing it by 4 in order to, to get number of double words present in the IP header and that is what IHL is type of service I keep as 0 total length currently because there are no uh, there is no TCP or UDP header or any data 
I am keeping the total length to be just that of the IP header. See, this total length is IP header and whatever IP encapsulates, whether it's TCP, UDP, data or something else. Once again, convert to H tones. The way you can figure out if a field has to be converted to H tones or H tone L is basically by looking at the size. Whenever you see a field which is two bytes long and has to be filled out in a header, you know that you have to do a H tones, host to network short. And whenever you see a field which is 32 bytes long, you know that you have to do an H tone L, which is host to network long. And whenever a field is of one byte size, there is no concept of having a byte ordering. So once again, going back, the ID field is two bytes, so we use H tones. Fragmentation offset, we currently keep it as zero. TTL, we set it to 111. TTL is one byte, so no byte ordering is required. Protocol, we just say it's IP proto underscore TCP, though we do not attach any TCP header right now. Now, checksum, currently we mention it as zero. The way of calculating the IP checksum is that first of all, go ahead, fill all requisite header fields and then fill the checksum field to be zero and then calculate the checksum over the whole IP header. Remember, this checksum is just for the IP header. Then go ahead and fill up the source address and the destination address. This is done using the classic functions inet underscore addr which will convert the source underscore IP mentioned above in ASCII format into network byte order binary format. Now once we are done filling up with the IP header, we go ahead and calculate the IP checksum. We've already mentioned the checksum is just over the IP header. 